Greetings and good day. Welcome back. We're here and it's, uh, what is today? Thursday. Shh, don't ask me. <laughs> Today's a Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. He has to go to work in a little bit because he works graveyard like a champ. Yeah. yeah. So don't even ask me what day it is because it's all messed up. Yeah, he, he goes to work on one day, comes home on a different one, so we won't get into that. We are Doom and Corruption and we are back for another episode. Today we're going to talk about something that's very controversial in some ways. It's not like one of those like abortion and or religion yeah, no, not, not that bad. topics. Um, well, it's, I guess uh, it depends on the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And I, well, yeah, because some games, yeah, some yeah, people are religion. Don't. But <laughs> we're going to talk about reboots. And, and, it, and not just in the terms of a series that existed a long time ago. And now they're just redoing the whole thing. Not necessarily going to take it, you know, only there. We're going to talk about that too, but also just some kind of things that we view as a reboot because this game was such a departure, you know, graphically or whatever from the previous game. So, starting off, what are your thoughts on just reboots in general? Are you pro or anti? I'm more than eh. Uh, I've didn't have much of an issue with too many reboots until it just got to a point where it was ridiculous. Because, like, now we're starting to get there because once one had rebooted and then it's like every franchise wants yeah. to do a reboot. And like, it, everyone is doing a reboot now. Yeah, now, then it gets ridiculous. But when, you know, those initial ones that started it, you could understand it. Uh, the Tomb Raider one, I, I understood pretty well because yeah. that was... Pretty well failing franchise there. Well, I'd say it was pretty well failed. Yeah, franchise After done that. so well in the PlayStation One and then PlayStation Two just. Pfft. Yeah, what was it like Angel of Darkness and I can't remember what the other ones. There were was called. like three games, seems like, and I, I didn't play any of them, so I I right. can't really <clears throat> speak on behalf of Tomb Raider, but I know what you mean. Yeah, and so I I didn't really mind seeing that one come out. Um, and apparently, it's really good. Yeah, I and haven't played it. Recently, the fighting game that came out that, you know, we all tend to love, yeah, Mortal Kombat came back with a reboot. and With a bang, I might add. Yeah, a reboot with a brand new uh, development team, new new studio, and it's amazing. If you haven't played this or, you know, you want to see what it's like, do check out some footage of this game. Um, I was kind of a, one of the skeptics myself and then I played it over here. Um, a few episodes back when we talked about our uh, favorite fighting games. And I must say, I really, really, really like this reboot because Mortal Kombat is a game that him and I used to play a lot back in the day. So for, you know, a more adult version of it to come out now was just pretty awesome. I was actually really, really satisfied. Yeah, because the last few entries that came in, uh, they were they were horrible. Yeah, some of the some of the PlayStation Two ones I've heard weren't that good, and and they're like they're definitely budget titles now because yeah. I think you could get like a like a three pack of no. like the last three releases for like twenty bucks, brand new still. So really, they're not not much to shake a stick at. But I haven't played any of those, but I have played that one, and it is spectacular. Oh yeah, and I don't know, just with the general. The general reboots, yeah, there's some I'll agree with, some I don't agree with, so I've never really been opposed against them, but cause I, there's still games I would like to see rebooted. Yeah, so. me too. That's that's where I'm at. There's, like, some, and, and for, for me, it's like, I actually kind of like reboots um, for, for a lot of reasons. Uh, for one, it gives someone new, or someone someone who hasn't experienced the game before, the opportunity to play that IP on a, in a, on the current playing field. Mm. Because even if they wanted to get into retro gaming, maybe they don't have the means to, you know, buy the hardware and buy the con or the, buy the cartridge or the disc or whatever it is. Because quite frankly, a lot of the good IPs on retro systems are really expensive. Yeah. In a lot of times, more expensive than a new release of, you know, of said reboot. Um, 
I mean, not always, obviously. You could get, I'm sure you could get, you know, the old Tomb Raider games for yeah. you know, next to nothing. Yeah. Because Reasonably they're correct. so common. I mean, yeah. everybody had Tomb Raider on the PlayStation 1. But, uh, yeah, and, and some games we had mentioned just before we started recording this, actually. Some games that we kind of view as reboots, but they're not technically reboots, even. Uh, one of those would be one of my personal favorites, uh, Doom 3. Now, Doom 3, yes, it's Doom 3. It is a sequel to Doom 2, but not really. I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with Doom 2. And, obviously, they overhauled everything when they did it. I mean, there's, there's nothing like Doom 2 at all. But, it is a fantastic game. And, for all intents and purposes, is a reboot of the series came out so much later, you know, than Doom 2, and it rekindled, you know, the the fans of id Software mm. to be into it, and it also brought in new fans of the IP that probably a lot of them went back and played the originals, too, just for grins. Oh, yeah. And the good thing about Doom 3 when it was released, too, the collector's edition and even the expansion, Resurrection of Evil, actually came with uh, Doom 1 and 2 on on the disc, and obviously with the recent yeah. release of the BFG edition, same deal. Like that's a good way get, to do it. Yeah, I mean you can get Doom One, Two, and Three, the expansion and <clears throat> bonus content, a new mission on the BFG edition, and it was like forty bucks when it hit shelves. So I mean, it's you know a supremely awesome deal, and you know it's just a great a great reboot of the whole series, not just you know, Doom 3, but right. everything. It was, you know, okay, here it is. And some people would view that as, oh, it's, you know, it's id, and in this case, Bethesda, just trying to get money by re-releasing the game and trying to get money out of people. But personally, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem supporting id software. Mm-hmm. I mean... I don't want to throw tons and tons of money at them, but I was happy to throw <laughs> 40 bucks for a Xbox 360 console release of Doom 3, Doom 1, and Doom 2, and then all that bonus stuff. Too. See, I've been wanting to get the BFG edition just because I heard they kind of fixed the lighting issue. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they make Doom 3 infinitely more playable. If you're like me and don't really care for uh, survival horror games that much, just mainly because I haven't played a bunch of them, I don't like the dark in games. Like, if a game is too dark, I can't play it. I mean, it's like, I sit there and just yeah, see, squint at the TV and I just can't do it. See, it wasn't the survival horror aspect that was the problem. It was the problem is that if I had to put the flashlight away to shoot something, I wouldn't yeah. be able to see if I could shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they fixed that. It, and some people were mad about that because they think, oh, it like, takes away from the challenge. Well, I don't want the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be able to have the flashlight out. Uh, but it's no different. It's it's actually in, it's done in a similar fashion to uh, the first Halo game, if you're familiar with that, um, where it's you know just a, a toggle button, you turn it on, and it, the flashlight's on your armor, so it moves with you, right. and then you still have your gun up, but then it also it slowly loses its charge, and when it's depleted, it goes off, and you have to wait till it, it charges back up again to use it again. Um, speaking of Halo, hey, there's another one, and I haven't played it, but on the 10th anniversary of the release of Halo Combat Evolved, they released the Combat Evolved Anniversary Edition of Halo, which was the entire first game, completely redone, HD remake for the Xbox 360, um, in which they added Xbox Live support, so you could play those same awesome Multiplayer maps on Halo 1 on Xbox Live. Haven't done it. I wish that I would have bought it when it came out because that's when everybody was playing live on there. Mm. That would have been so much fun. And I think I remember when uh, that came out, the big thing with that was is that it was a one-button press and on the fly you could change it from the HD remake to, just yeah. to, to, to original yeah, graphics. To Halo 1, yeah. yeah. So that was pretty cool too. So you could actually see the contrast, which you know I don't know why you would want to play the old way on the new disc when you can Xbox 360 still supports the original disc you can just put Halo 1 in if you want to see the old graphics yeah. but I like that that's cool that you can switch back and forth nostalgic purposes just, well yeah just, just <laughs> to see the difference I guess um, but 
Yeah, that's that's that, in my opinion that is a well well done remake. And I want to say I'm not positive, but I want to say it was released in similar fashion where it was only like forty bucks. Like it wasn't it wasn't full price. <clears throat> yeah, if I recall, it, it wasn't it wasn't a bad price. Which, you know, out, but I I wasn't a big Halo fan, so right? I well, you're still not. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> I've got tisk, three. That's tisk, about it. Tisk. But anyhow, we have some more here. You want to take the next one? Uh, sure, because we got... When the originals came out on Super Nintendo, and then they progressed through... This was kind of exciting for GameCube, was the Metroid Prime series. Oh, yeah. And I couldn't bring in to tell you what the other two were called. I think well, there was... there was Echoes of... Echoes was two, and I don't know what the third one was called. Yeah, I... But the I, first Metro was out on the NES. Yeah. And the second on the Game Boy. And then the third was on Super. But when Metro Prime came out for the reboot, and especially in a first person shooter yeah. style, and but technically wasn't, it was it was an odd blend that actually yeah. worked really well. It was first and third person shooter. Like when you were when you were just walking around it was first person, but then when you changed into the morph ball it yeah, was third. Yeah, third. But the the shooting mechanics weren't like your Call of Duty first person shooter mechanics. No, no they were a little bit more tanky, I guess. Yeah, it was a little hard, actually. And, but it, it kept that suspense up for that, uh, the environment and the adventure that you were going yeah. through with this world that was actually really gorgeous. Yeah, it was awesome, actually. Yeah, so... I got stuck somewhere. I'm I'm several hours into it. I don't even know where I'm at exactly. Um, I just... It's it's an awesome play, and I, I don't know why I ever stopped playing it, actually, because it's, it's really fun. Yeah, and it's about the same with me, because I, I played it, and then... I got into something else, and it just got shelved. And yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, technically, <laughs> once again, this is not like a true blue reboot. It's just the next game in the sister in the series that came out after Super Metroid. But really, it is a reboot because it's nothing like the original side scrollers. Right. I mean, it's it's three D. It's still got the the platforming and the quote Metroidvania in a way that you know you have to do a lot of backtracking. Like, you have to do a lot of go here and do this and then come back down and go this way and do this. A lot of that sort of stuff, which actually, in a way, was almost more confusing because now it's in 3D. You know, now we have a whole bunch of directions and stuff, yeah. just up, down, left, right. You know, it's just... Yeah, it, it was easy getting lost. Yeah, it really was. And I think that's the problem. I think that's why, probably why I stopped playing, actually, because it's like, okay, where in the hell do, do I, I do go, go, yeah. go now? You know, and I, I, but I like that they kept like the save system kind of the same, where you had to like find the little save points. I kind of like that you still had to do that, just in a similar similar fashion to, uh, and, I, and the, at least Super Metroid and Metroid Two. And your upgrades were pretty well the same too. Yeah, so. like the suit. And they that. they stayed pretty true to it. So yeah, it wasn't like off the wall. No, it made sense. It was yeah. it was a logical, a logical next step uh, for a game because. Quite frankly, if if they had released a 2D Metroid game on the GameCube, sure, big fans of the series and big fans of 2D games would probably have been okay with it, but probably it probably wouldn't have sold very well. Yeah. <laughs> but Metroid Prime in itself, you know, was a system seller for the GameCube for a lot of people. Yeah. And then Twilight Princess came out. Oh, yeah, of yeah. course. That's beside the point. Yeah. <laughs> um, next is kind of a. Uh, it's not really a reboot. It's kind of it's it's one of the a lot of I see a lot of series doing this now with well like a lot of games that are on like the the PlayStation Two they'll release in a bundle with a kind of a, a new coat of paint sort of on the PlayStation Three and he has just one here that we will we won't talk about go into great detail about this one specifically. We just kind of wanted to talk about this style of reboot. Um, and at least you, you were talking about, you had played Shadow of the Colossus but never played Ico or right. Ico. So this was like a really good first yeah. opportunity. Yeah, because like I said, uh, I played Shadow of the Colossus. It was a fun game. And I still had it for PS2, but I didn't play Ico and when it, or Ico. Like I said, I can't. Remember. I don't know which one it is. No. I've heard both, so yeah. we'll just go with both. Yeah, I hadn't played that one. And it looked really interesting, but I can remember the time that it was launching, 
it was competing with uh, Rockstar Games' State of Emergency. Yeah, no. Yeah, it was hard to compete with Rockstar. You put Rockstar on a turd and it will sell yeah. like crazy. So, to pick this one up, this was nice to welcome myself into Eco. And that's a gorgeous game. I had never even now. heard of it and for a long time. You know, I heard of Shadow of Colossus a lot. That was a thing when it came out. It got buried hard underneath yeah. the releases that happened. And then Shadow of the Colossus came out in a pretty good time. Got a yeah, phone it, call, so <laughs> I am totally discombobulated. I have yeah. no idea what we were talking about. I know we were talking about the Eco and Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, okay. But, yeah. Cool game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there are lots of other games that came out like that in similar fashion. Yeah. I know that they recently like did like the Ratchet and Clank collection, mm-hmm. like all three of the original games. And, like, the, uh, shit. Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, Silent Hill. Yeah. Uh, I th- I, there's a lot of these series that are that are coming out on, like, these HD remakes. And I, for one, think it's awesome. Oh, uh, God of War, that was another God one. God of War, good. yeah. And that one, that one was especially good because it released the first two, um... God of War games from the PlayStation 2 and the two that were on PSP. Oh, right. And put all four games on the PlayStation 3. So that was kind of a cool thing. So if you didn't want to worry about the, the PSP UMDs and you didn't have to worry, what, worry about multiple PlayStation 2 discs, you could play all four games on PlayStation right. 3. And then, got, of course, God of War 3 come out on the PlayStation 3. Yeah, they're, they're great so. for just, you know, getting new fans into the series. Yeah. Because, like... A lot of us, we didn't hear about yeah. Echo when it came out. I mean, this, I mean, PlayStation 2 is kind of like on the edge of the internet, you know. There was lots of stuff on the internet already when the PlayStation 2, when games were coming out of the PlayStation 2, but it was still nothing like it is today. I mean, right. today, I mean, you can't, you know. We you, still relied a lot on magazines. Yeah, that, that, word of mouth. Yeah. A lot. Like, especially for me. It's like, I didn't really read a lot of gaming magazines. And I certainly didn't spend that much time on the internet looking for games. Right. Uh, or looking at games and stuff. I'm sure some people did. But I didn't. So, all the games that I had and that I played with word of mouth. You yeah. know? Or I just bought it on a whim. It's like, oh, this game looks cool. You know, I'll get this one. And then usually that ended up, you know, badly. But, uh... Yeah, I had a buddy that liked to buy uh, games based off of box art, so... Well, you know, I, I, for one, think that box art should be indicative of the actual game. Like, it should actually have something to do with it. And it should... Good games should have good box art. <laughs> I, I, I am in that, that ball field that says that. I like box art. But yeah, I wouldn't buy a game based on box art. But I have been guilty of buying a game based on who developed it. Yeah, okay. And... That in price. So far, <laughs> I, well, yeah. So far, I haven't been totally burned by it, but, you know, if it says Square Enix, eh, I'm probably going to buy it. I mean, if it, if, I, if it looks like something I would want to play. Like, as I bought Front Mission Evolved because of that. You know, and some people are, you know, cringing when I say that. But yeah. I really like that game. So I haven't played it. I wanted to, but I haven't been played it. I have it. You can play it. <laughs> There's lots of people that don't like it, and that's fine. I mean, you're allowed to not like it, but I bought it because it was a Square Enix game, and it was a mech third-person shooter, and I thought it looked fun, so I bought it, and I was pleasantly surprised at how good it was and how much I liked it. But I like the mech games. I we'll move on yeah. from that. Yeah. Um, we really just have one more. I, I grabbed Quake 4, too, but it, this follows in the same vein as Doom 3 in that it was, you know, the just the next game, but it was uh, a vast step forward uh, for the series. And it kind of flopped, which is sad, because this is my favorite Quake game. Yeah, and that really was just kind of like, well, same with like the Unreal Tournament 3 when they both kind of released. Basically just to try and revamp that life back into those older yeah, those first person shooters that really started it all, and that's my favorite style of first person shooter. Yeah. But that style really died with, you know, the modern uh, first person shooter. I would say though that uh, Halo is kind of 
kind of the logical progression of of this style. Mm. Um, it's not the same, obviously. It's it's actually quite a bit better, but you know it it, it follows the old style of your Doom and your Unreal and your Quake more so than like Call of Duty or Battlefield do. Right, they're kind of their own thing, and and even they are pretty far right. apart from one another. Yeah. Because um, I like Call of Duty and I don't like Battlefield. But that's just because for some reason, like, I, for when I play first-person shooters, I just want to shoot and just go. You know, go, go, go. Yeah. Because that's the kind of style I like. And you can't do that in Battlefield. It takes quite a bit more patience and accuracy. And I'm not so good at those two things. Well, Battlefield 3, if you did the team deathmatch, you got a lot more action. And sure. Shit, but... And I play a little bit of, of Bad Company, too, it, and it's the same See, deal. And I love that one. I'm not so big with Battlefield 3, but Bad Company 2 is pretty awesome. Uh, my favorite still is Battlefield 2, so... Yeah, I just... I don't know. I just I just never got into it. And I, I tried it a few times. It just wasn't my thing. Uh, but I do like Call of Duty. Yeah. One more we got to talk about, <laughs> and, and I don't know too much about the original series. And I, I actually don't know too much about this game. So I'm going to let you take it. Boom! All right, we got XCOM, Enemy Unknown. The original games were on PC, and they were, you know, the isometric uh, turn-based strategy-type games that this held true to. And I can't begin to tell you when the last XCOM came out, but it was like... I think it's been a while. It's been like nine, early 90s. I, I, I not, was going to say it was DOS. Yeah. If like, not, it was like, if, not, if not, it was earlier than that. So the new XCOM iteration, Enemy Unknown is really good and stays true to that style even if I hadn't played it it was still good to get into that type of that type of gameplay uh, it kind of reminds me just vaguely of like the original Fallout 1 and Fallout 2's isometric style that's another one we forgot Fallout 3 son of a <laughs> and you're such a huge Fallout <laughs> fan anyway continue and then we'll talk about Fallout yeah so with that that isometric style it, it was a really nice type of style back in the day Sorry. But it kind of fell from favor. So to see another game go back to it, that was that was nice. You know, it's strange because like those type of games, like the isometric, like the war games and stuff too, were really popular. Yeah. Like when when PCs were were new. Right. Like when PC gaming was new, they were like ridiculously popular. And but I mean, at the same time, when that was the thing, the uh, the stigma, I guess with computer gaming too was most of them were, were kind of geeky kind of nerds you know the kind of pc gamers were the kind of people that built their own pcs yeah. to to play these games whereas as it progressed it got away from that less and less you know so i guess it makes sense that some of those the more strategy and like the more uh almost pen and paper yeah. kind of gaming kind of went by the wayside you know in favor of more discreet Mario action, yeah. and you know and stuff like that. But this I, I did notice that I had seen a few uh, gameplay footages of the originals from back, and yeah, it looks like a lot of the complexities of like the original are toned down to to cater to the new age uh, play styles. I'll say right. So it, it it blends really well some of the old and the new and. It, it really was a good one. Uh, their next iteration, I'm not sure about. It doesn't have, like, uh, th it doesn't have, like, uh, different levels of, like, difficulty, too, in that, like, you can play in a way that, you know, when your character, like, when someone dies, yeah. they're toast. Yeah, it, it's got, it's got like different stuff. Permadeath or whatever. I, if I remember right, they've got, like, an, a mode that takes that permadeath off. But the core game, yeah, it, but your your character dies. He's dead. You're recruiting somebody else. Not my kind of game. <laughs> and I think there's even a mode for it to go to like classic difficulty. So uh, hard as balls is what we're just going to refer to this as <laughs> hard as balls. Balls hard. <laughs> it, it it's ridiculous on um, the level of difficulty that can used to generate from the original games. I I don't know how they had fans, but. They, they had a hard following. I'm telling you, it's geeks. Yeah. No offense to them, but they're smarter than me. Goddamn, you're crazy. 
<laughs> okay, talk about Fallout a little bit because you you yeah. played them all, haven't you? Yeah, I've I played uh, Fallout One and Fallout Two, and then I played uh, Fallout Tactics, which was a little bit more kind of like our XCOM here. It was really a tactical game. They were all isometric, top down, and the action point system was really nice in those. The games were splendid. And truth be told, I didn't play them until after I played three. Uh, that's how I actually got into the series. Okay. So I played Fallout 3, and I'm thinking, well, hell, this is an awesome game. I'm like, what the hell were the other games like? Because I remember I'd seen them in, like, Walmart, and they had, like, Fallout 1 and 2 in, like, a little double pack, uh-huh. and, like, a little cheap, like, $10 section or $20 section that they had. And I never got around to buying it, because one day I went in to go buy it, but they didn't have it. So I yeah. picked up Deus Ex Invisible Wars that day. So Good trade. Yeah, wasn't too bad. So eventually, after playing Fallout Three, I went back and I played Fallout One and Two. And you got those on Good Old Games. Actually. Yeah, GoodOldGames.com. You can get all three. You know, Fallout One, Two, and Tactics. And I've played them, and but they're quite a bit different they're, than they're Fallout di- Three. Oh, they're way different than Three, but that's just in the overall gameplay mechanics. Uh, three stayed pretty true to the style. They stayed true to kind of the uh, the, the story. And the, the humor of the Fallout universe. I mean, you'd still see, like, the random the random encounters of, like, Fallout 3, you had the little crashed UFO, and Fallout 1 and 2, you don't... If I remember right, it was the first, or it might have been the second Fallout. It wasn't just a crashed UFO, it was actually, like, a crashed, uh... Crashed away team from, like, the Enterprise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and one of the things was, is, like, why are all these guys wearing red shirts? <laughs> so, awesome. you, you had, like, your 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 pop culture references yeah. in those games. And in Fallout 3 and even in New Vegas, you were still getting those references. And it, it was just a fun game. I mean, the overall atmosphere, even though it was that dark, uh, post-apocalyptic brooding, it was still a fun atmosphere. Yeah. Just because, you know, they, they're living that life, so hell, they may as well make the best of it. So yeah, sure. They're, they're, they're doing their humor, and it, it blended all well into a game. And... To go to Fallout 3's third person or first person, however you chose to play it, those mechanics, a step away from the isometric, I think it was a big gamble, but it worked out so well. Well, yeah, because they could have easily <clears throat> kept it the same, and I think it probably would have still done pretty well. Mm-hmm. I mean, because that style of games it hasn't gone away. I mean, no. you still got your Diablo style, right. you know, of graphics and the way things kind of look and. You know, people are still pretty into that, and WoW is the same way. You know, so people are, you know, I think it would have, could have, could have done well that way too, like classic mode. Right. So that'd be kind of cool if they come out with now, like, that'd like a, a reboot of a reboot. Yeah. Fallout 3 classic mode. All right, modders, you know what you gotta do. <laughs> I don't think I have any people that do that on the channel. Damn it. Sorry. We gotta expand. Yeah. We gotta <laughs> All right. Well, I suppose that's really all we had to talk about. I mean, I don't know. I mean, one could argue, you know, that any step away from, you know, classic style to something else is kind of a reboot. To me, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, that's kind of the way it is. I mean, you could argue, go like Mario 64, you know, going from 2D to 3D was a, a huge jump. And, I mean, some would argue that's, you know, not a reboot, that's just logical evolution. But then in some cases, you got games that just change styles completely. You know, it's just a different kind of game entirely. Right. And, like I said, with the the new things, the only thing I'm looking forward to right now is going to be a reboot. It's Thief. Thief. Thief from, uh, there was Thief 1, 2, and... Uh, oh, Deadly Shadows. Okay. I picked those up recently on the Steam sale. Yeah. But they're rebooting Thief here soon. And I heard that actually. That's why I was kind of dumbfounded. I was like, where have I heard that before? Oh, yeah. So the Thief game that's supposed to be coming out well, probably next year. I'm looking forward to that for a reboot. Uh, I don't know too many others are, but that that's truly a reboot since. Well, uh, one of them that I'm really excited about, and it's because it's a series that I'm obsessed with at the moment is uh, Etrian Odyssey. They're actually releasing, uh, it's going to be called Etrian Odyssey Untold, uh, and it's got another, like, another name after that, something about Millennium Girl after that. I don't know, like, the full title. But it is a reboot 
of the first Etrian Odyssey game that came out on the DS. It's going to be out on the 3DS in the same style as Etrian Odyssey 4. So I'm ridiculously excited about that. Uh, we're not going to see you again. Oh, no. <laughs> Never again. Never. Other than that, there's only like one game right now that I wish they would reboot. One series, I should say. What's that? Legacy of Kane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Legacy of Kane. Yeah, Kain. that would be awesome. The, the Blood Omen and Soul Reavers, you know, combo universe there that I would love to see another reboot, and that's generally the same style of probably Soul Reaver. You know, I was actually just talking to somebody the other day about, because uh, I just played and beat uh, Demon's Crest on the Super Nintendo. I, I just emulated it. Mm-hmm. But I, I was talking on, uh, on Atari Age, and someone, you know, we just, you know, he just commented on my post about beating it. Yeah, uh, because I commented, you know, it's, I I emulated this, and you know, I don't have any desire to pay, you know, that much money for a physical copy because it's an expensive game. And uh, he commented about that. It's like, well, if they ever released it on Virtual Console or or did a remake or something that he would shell out money for it. And I was like, well, yeah, I probably would too. But what would be even better would be like a remake that was a sequel or something like that because that game kind of ends on like a kind of a cliffhanger sort of. Well. Uh, they go back to tie it all up with um, Defiance. Mm-hmm. Like I said, Game Defiance. And it ends fairly well, but to an extent that game, you could tell, was really like a rush job. Yeah. I, I really wish they could have extended it out more with expanding on to like Soul Reaver 1 and 2 and then Blood Only 1 and 2 and expand those maybe one more title to loosen up those ends to go all the way to Defiance. Because Defiance changed it drastically to being just a, basically like a hack and slash uh, adventure game instead of just the, uh, instead of the study that exploration aspect that you had in like Soul Reaver. Yeah. It was basically a straight, almost 2D level design style of go here, go there. I played Soul Reaver for a while, but my my uh, Dreamcast VMU doesn't save, so. Oh. I. <laughs> I didn't play for very long. <laughs> yeah, I, I played like one day and came back the next day and my save was gone. I was like, nope. No, yeah, that's nope. That, that's definitely one you can't really just do in one day. Not do it again. <laughs> that's, so. a, that's a long game. But it was fun though. Yeah, I mean, it that it would be cool, you know, even if it wasn't like a like a true reboot. You know, if they were just to like fleece up that whole series and release it on on one disc or something like that. Yeah. You know, for a for a current gen system, it'd be awesome. Yeah, but. Yeah. It's one of those one of those series that I think is maybe just a little too obscure, um, to 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 garner the attention. Who made that? Uh, Crystal Dynamics. If I recall, if I remember right, I think they're the same ones that did uh, Tomb Raider as well. Oh really? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. You hear that? Yeah. From what Legacy of King? Reboot Legacy of King. Yeah. Kind of a cool series. I like it. But Demon's Crest was actually. The kind of the offshoot of Ghost and Goblins. Uh, it was like Ghost and Goblins, and then it was Gargoyle's Quest, Gargoyle's Quest 2, and then it was Demon's Crest, it's Capcom. Mm-hmm. So you can imagine the, the possibility of there being a re release. There'd be a lot of demons and dragons in Capcom. Yeah, there really is. They're a weird company. Yeah. <laughs> Mega Mans and their dragons and their dogmas. <laughs> <laughs> We're just rambling now. Yeah, we go. We're going to wrap this one up. We're going <laughs> to put the book yeah. down. Yeah, or whatever other cliche you can think of. Yeah. He's got to go to work. you got to make that money. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to wrap it up. All right. Take care, y'all. Bye.